Good morning. We have an incredible ability yeah. to make molecules that have the potential to make the drugs of the future and save the lives of so many people. Some of you in this room right now might be making some of these molecules. And I'm here to tell you how we might be able to harness that potential through science and technology. My name is Kevin Arias. I'm a scientist. I'm also the co-founder of a biotechnology company that works on drug discovery. And today, I really want to give you an idea of how science and technology are enabling new ways of finding drugs that would impact human health. So first of all, I had no business to be in science, if I look back, and probably even less to be here in front of you today. I was born in a very small village in the French Alps and was rather destined to be a ski instructor, uh, but my parents forced me to go to university and get exposed to knowledge, and through that, I had the luck to meet great mentors who really showed me how big ideas can be achieved. And with that in mind, I really want to I really want to try to communicate what many of us, scientists and people in the biotechnology industry, are witnessing, how science and technology are changing the way we approach human health. So let's talk about therapeutic molecules. Many people typically think that drugs or therapeutic molecules are Tylenol or aspirin. These molecules have been made by chemistry, synthesized, and We've made really thousands of molecules that have solved many problems. Uh, we can cure many diseases. And that's one part of the story. We all know very well that there are still too many diseases for which we don't have drugs or therapeutic molecules that work. So today I want to tell you about a specific type of molecules that nature is making, that all of us are making, even animals, as part of a natural defense mechanism, and how these molecules have actually the potential to give us drugs with unparalleled properties. And these molecules are called antibodies. I'm sure and I expect many of you will be familiar with this name. These are the molecules that we make uh, when we get the flu shot. Uh, and I expect you to get your flu shot every year, by the way. Antibodies are just amazing. They're molecules made by immune cells, and the role is, or their role, is really to stick and tag anything that might be harmful for our body. That can be a bacteria, that can be a virus, that can be a cancer cell, that can even be an allergen, or any kind of toxic chemical that comes across. Now, antibodies have this unique ability to stick and tag anything they bind to. And when they do this, they give a signal to the immune system, our body, or in the case of animals, their body, to get rid of that molecule and, and clear it. So that's very interesting when you start thinking about therapeutic purposes um, and thinking about maybe making a drug out of it. Now, the truly amazing thing is that as I speak, all of us here, we're all making millions and millions of different antibodies, as I speak. And antibodies are molecules. They're floating in our body, and they all share a similar structure, but they have slight differences. And these differences allow them to bind one molecule versus another. It gives them specificity. It also means you can make antibodies against anything. That's the way nature worked it out. So now this is becoming very interesting if you're in the drug industry, because if you have a therapeutic program, then it means you need to find the antibody that has the properties you want so that you can use this as a drug. But here's the trick. Each antibody is made by a single, tiny immune cell. We have billions and billions of cells. So if you're in the drug industry, or if you want to make a new drug using an antibody, the game is not only to find the best antibody, but it's also to, also to find the antibody or the cell that is making that antibody. And that's not an easy thing to do. I don't know if you remember um, when you were in high school, if you take a drop of your blood, 
and you put it in a glass slide, and you put this under the microscope, and you look, what you can see is literally millions, again, of cells floating, and you have no way to tell which one is making the antibody you might be interested in. So if you're a scientist and you're working on a program and you have to find that antibody, you have a really big problem. You don't know and you can't get that cell that's making the antibody you need. So how do you do that? Well, as very often, uh, what happened in science, the same way we've been shooting for the stars, we've built rockets and we've built satellites, we've built new tools, new systems. Well, in this case, we've had to build systems that can allow us to screen these cells that are making antibodies to find the ones that we can turn into a drug. So luckily, I've been part of a group of very smart people a few years ago here at the university, and we were all working on different aspects of biomedical research, but we were essentially tinkering and trying to make miniaturized systems that could move cells around. And quite rapidly, we realized that by combining the things together that all of us were doing, we could actually make a system that was very efficient at finding those cells that are making antibodies that could be turned into drugs. It's been working so well that we started a company out of it, and the company is doing quite well. We're working with some of the most innovative companies in the world now, biotech and pharmaceutical companies. So that's been a long story short, but what I'm telling you is that we can find these antibodies, and that's a really great thing. Now, what you might ask me is, well, that's great. You know, you're telling us antibodies are important, but is it really relevant? So the context, and just to give you a little bit of perspective, is that 30 years ago, the only drugs or therapeutic molecules that were on the market were molecules like Tylenol or aspirin, these type of chemicals. Now we're in 2018. Six of the top 10 blockbuster drugs are antibodies. This is the fastest growing class of therapeutics. This is a $100 billion market. We have enabled Therapeutic strategies that were thought to be impossible before. Cancer is a great example. We've been having issues making molecules that can kill the cancer and keep healthy cells of patients alive. That's why we have all these problems with toxicity, side effects of uh, molecules or drugs that are on the market. With antibodies, people have enabled strategy where they actually target the immune system of the patient so that the immune system of the patient can actually get rid of the cancer itself. It's been a revolution in the field. People who were out of solution uh, cured the cancer themselves and get into remission. This has led to a new field called immunotherapy. We've been able to treat arthritis, inflammation, autoimmune diseases, and so on. Even a few weeks ago, a new antibody has been approved to treat migraine, which is a relief for many people. And that's what's happening at a pace that is unprecedented. Now, the bigger thing, the thing that is even more amazing, is what I'm just about to tell you. So we all know that infectious diseases, and specifically viruses, are a problem. Flu and other viruses still kill hundreds of thousands of people every year. The Ebola crisis is a sober reminder of the vulnerability of our societies to those types of pandemics. They spread rapidly, and when they're lethal, uh, we are very exposed. Bill Gates, earlier this spring, called us the biggest threat humanity is facing if a new virus or a virus weaponized is launched. A couple of days ago, a plane was flying from La Mecca to GFK, had a problem. Out of 500 passengers, about 100 of them got sick, and no one knew what it was. So when they landed in GFK, it was almost a crisis. No one knew exactly what was making these people sick. And we weren't sure we could react. If it, this had been Ebola, I'm not sure we could have taken it. So I've told you how antibodies can be powerful. Um, we've been very successful so far. 
So the next question is, can we use antibodies to prevent the next pandemic? And my answer is yes. Yes, we can. If you or me are getting sick, if we're getting the flu, if, uh, bad luck, we get Ebola and we survive it, our body will make great antibodies. And now we have technologies to find antibodies that can neutralize the virus. That's something we can do. But in the case of viruses that are spreading rapidly, we don't have the capabilities to discover the antibody and turn it into a drug rapidly enough. It takes about seven to 10 years from the discovery of an antibody before it reaches market. That's the status, the situation right now. So how are we going to solve this? Well, let me tell you about DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency from the Department of Defense in the US. For those of you who haven't heard about DARPA, this is the agency that has created ARPANET, the ancestor of what we know as internet now. They've created stealth technology. They've even created Siri, GPS. So this is an agency, and these are people who are living in the future. This is science fiction. And one of their top priority is to solve that problem. How do we prevent the next pandemic? So what they want to do is to put in place all the technologies that we need once and for all so that we can discover antibodies, vectorize them, have enough to deliver to about 20,000 people so that we can put a fire break would any new virus or any new flu virus, any new mutant would come out. And they want to do this in 60 days. 60 days. I told you right now, the industry is doing this in seven to 10 years. That's the magnitude of the effort. And I'm telling you, all the people working on that project, led by Colonel Matt Hepburn, it's a public project, it's called P3, are committed almost feel it's their duty, because we know we have to solve that problem. And the only way to get there is through science and technology and pushing the limits of it. So with that in mind, if there's one message I'd like you to take home today, is that we are witnessing amazing progress in the space of human health. There's a combination of basic discoveries, investment, new technologies that are all coming together, that are providing unique opportunities. But at the same time, when science is more than ever questioned, I'm thinking about the anti-vaccine movement, for example, when disinformation is shared so rapidly, I truly believe that we must remain mindful and vigilant, mindful and vigilant about what science and technology has brought us. We've built most of our societies on science and technology, we've been able to understand better our world, but also how us are working as humans. So we need to keep building on this momentum. We need to keep pushing the limits so that we can make a positive impact on our societies. Thank you very much. <laughs>